that you came out of that. I just love marketing. Yeah. All right, so you guys, we're about to talk marketing. One, because we need it as a podcast. We just started marketing, and it's made a big difference. You can see more and more people showed up. But it's a tricky thing, and it's a word that's kind of got a lot of uh, overhead. So we're going to try to cut down in the most important pieces. And today we brought somebody who has a lot of experience marketing overseas. He helped a company called Mad Rabbit Kicking Tiger, which creates bags, accessories, ex inspired by architectural concepts. And he took this company and made it popular in several different countries. So there's a, something really interesting about the way he's able to find different cultures and still make it popular that we think maybe we can learn for our startups. And then he also is the founder of the Unbelievable Testing Laboratory, which creates technology-driven footwear that pushes the boundaries of design and function. So we are going to learn more about how he was pushing those boundaries. Please put your hands together for Sean Nath. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Got, got some fans on. Marketing. Marketing to the front row, front left. Yeah. The key to marketing is, is, is seating. Front left, yes. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so I was really surprised about all the different places you've lived, all the places you've been. Yeah. Why so many places? Um, okay, well, when I, was, when I was growing up, I grew up in Southern California. Um, and I, I really didn't travel much. My family took, you know, very regional vacations and things like that. But um, with my friends, we, we were into different things like sports, and I played soccer, and I played football, and did things like that. And we were, uh, probably our biggest passion together with, with my friends was, was surfing. Okay. And surfing for us was all about exploration. Um, we'd, once we were able to drive especially, we'd go further and further and further to the point where we're telling our, friends par or our parents that we're spending the night at a friend's house and we'd be in Mexico for the weekend or something <laughs> like that. So um, addicted to those waves. Yeah, huh? yeah. Although although international travel was not a big part of my upbringing, I definitely had a a a youth or, or a childhood where you know it was all about exploration and, and sort of pushing that boundary further and further geographically. Okay. Until by the time I was in college, I got the opportunity to study abroad. Um, I applied for a scholarship, and I said, if I get it, I'm going to go. So I got it, and, and then went. I went to France. I lived in France for a year, had a beautiful time, and it just so happened that the uh, university system in France had shut down uh, for a good part of that time yeah. due to, to some student strikes, and my, uh, <laughs> my scholarship stayed intact, and I just traveled around Europe for a while. <laughs> so I learned a lot, and uh, it sparked a fire. and. Uh, Came back from that, um, looked at what other options were available, and then there was an option to go to Hong Kong. So mm -hmm. I said, well, I've been to the West. The land, of, the land of dreams was calling you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I applied for another Outrageous. scholarship and said, if I get it, I'll go. And I got it, and so I went. And, um, so you just make these bets with yourself. So and then, then it's yeah. kind of whatever happens, you end up changing <laughs> yeah, your life I around mean, it. I'm, I'm, I'm a somewhat logical person, uh, believe it or not. And, um, you know, it, it's sort of like, if it, if it makes sense, why not do it? Um, even though going and doing it seems risky or somewhat um, adventurous, to me at that time it was like a no-brainer. Like, well, right. of course I'm going to go. Um, so I went to Hong Kong, got to travel in China. And then how did that turn into the um, mad rabbit kicking <laughs> tiger? Yeah, thing. yeah. So um, I, I think growing up with the action sports kind of all around me in, in Orange County in California and seeing that, I always had an interest in brands. Um, and after I graduated, I, I left Hong Kong, and I actually moved to France again. And I worked at Quicksilver, um, which is a major surf brand and things like that. And this was around like, well, it was like 2008, 2009, where um, things started to go sour. And so I was looking at what else to do. And I had some friends in Shanghai, and they said, you, you should really come back here. So I just went. And I, okay. you know, no job, nothing like that. Um, had friends back so home. So tell me, like, when, so they were like, come out because there's great opportunities. Like, how yeah. do you assess that? Because I know a lot of us, like, you're like, hey, join my startup. Like, come do yeah. this thing. Like, what do you, what does that mean, like, tangibly, what you look for? Oh, I wasn't looking for much. <laughs> oh, I was, I was very, move. I was quite young. Um, I think I was 23 at the time. And I was just 24 and looking for something interesting to do, somewhere to go. I had nothing to lose. Um, it wasn't like I was giving up a, a 
you know, major, major corporate job or right. a lot of responsibilities that I had. It was like, okay, why not? Let's go try right. it for six You've months. You've just been chasing the waves. and Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And um, I went out there and I started, um, kind of, you know, I had friends back home in California who were in action sports and things like that. And they were asking me for things because, oh, my buddy's in China. And um, ended up through that, um, over the course of a couple of years, growing a pretty successful business. Um, that was in product design, development, sourcing, and that sort of thing. And part of my, I, I guess part of my passion was missing, which was the branding side of things. And, and that's where it kind of gets into the marketing discussion. But right. um, I was very much involved in factories and product development and sort of the innovational side. Um, when my interest in brands from the, the, the get-go had always been in the lifestyle. And um, I, I think what that time gave me in those first years in China was a very like on the grounds, hand on, hands on how to get something done, how to get it shipped, how to get it to where it okay. needs to go. You know, very logistical, very... Right, you just got your brain thinking about how it actually, yeah, how the whole yeah. system works. Yeah, if someone has an idea, how do you actually do it? Okay, so once you kind of understood that, what are the lessons that you could teach us possibly about knowing that system and like something we could apply right off the bat? Knowing that system, ooh. Um, <laughs> well, we're well, actually, maybe, maybe, tell the, maybe tell the Doc uh, Martin story. Like, I yeah, mean, maybe yeah. you could, like, we could use an example. Like, what do you think made that catch in such a different market? Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's a really epic branding story. Um, it's, it's a brand, you know, that has, it's, it has a product that's really geared toward construction or, or military use. Right. It's a boot. It's a boot. It, you know, right. it's a heavy boot. And somehow that boot is about music. How did that happen? Um, you know, every brand's a little different. And sometimes you deliberately go about doing something or you put yourself in the position for something to happen, um, and, and it just happens. And, and those occasions are rare, and everyone tries to put themselves in those positions. But sometimes, I, in, and more so in the case of like Doc Martens or a couple other brands like that, something happened to them. Um, people discovered it and said, you know, this, this is the look I want. Mm, so it became gotcha. a look, and it, something they did well was they were able to pivot, right? They are able to say, okay, we are about music and they're able to quickly go in that direction. So um, that's the sort of connection that I was missing in my really nuts and bolts, factory floor, product development side of my life in China. Right. And it's what I wanted to get back into. Um, that sort of psychology, that sort of emotional side of the brand where that you know, piece of fashion allows somebody to be the person they want to be to portray the, you know, the image they want to portray, right. to tell the world something. Okay, and then just as we're starting to run low on time, tell me about uh, Kickstarter. Like, you had an amazingly successful run on it twice. Yeah. Like, what yeah. is it that especially <laughs> small fashion entrepreneurs could maybe learn from? Yeah, yeah, so, so one of the brands I'm involved with, I'm the co-founder of uh, Unbelievable Testing Laboratory, which is a Love the name. footwear yeah. brand. Yeah, Unbelievable Testing Laboratory and uh, Mad Rabbit Kicking Tiger. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> a bit love unconventional. It. But um, yeah, when we went about doing a Kickstarter for us, it was just a natural place to be because our target was people who are into technology and innovation. Uh -huh. And that was it, uh, mostly men. And that was where they were. And so that made a lot of sense. And it, it just so happened to be a, a sort of less risky place to launch a brand and a place to say, OK, let's see what people want. Do they want this? So right. the first time we did it, we went about it with this um, yellow Tyvek shoe we call the pencil. Okay. And um, <laughs> it happens to be a pair there. Um, oh, that's the shoe? <laughs> yeah, they're very iconic. And it, whenever you see them, you, you definitely know what they are. Oh, yeah. It's like the little eraser. <laughs> yeah. It looks like she could erase yeah. with her toes. It's, it's, it's a big part of why we chose Dance that, on a that, chalkboard that or something? shoe. Or on a um, pad. Because <laughs> we knew, like, uh, on Kickstarter, you know, what really made a Kickstarter is, like, media. So right. we built this thing with, you know, friends and family support to get us over this certain level where the media would kick in. And um, our first go around, I mean, it was just amazing. We look at the first 100, 200 backers, we know everybody. Yeah. After that, 
it was sort and of into the up, ether, yeah. and it was really amazing. And it was on <laughs> GQ and Hype Beast and all these great things. Yeah. And uh, took off and became a thing. And then we went back to it um, this last June, which was a year after our first one, yeah. with a new shoe, co shoe called the Ninja, which is a, a minimalist sort of travel shoe, and beat our old record. We sold 2013 pairs of the, the Lightwing, which is the, the Lightwing pencil, which you saw there. And then we sold almost 3,000 pairs of the Ninja. That's um, awesome. Which are just being delivered now, by the way. So, if you okay. if you backed us, you're, you you should expect it tonight. Expect it soon. <laughs> I can imagine that moment. Like, hey, is this anybody's grandma? Anybody on this order? And yeah, like, no, yeah. no, no. It's that somebody new. It's somebody yeah. we don't know. Yeah, and that was I a cool thing about moment, cool so. thing about the ninja was we didn't know a lot of these people. So yeah. it was like we somehow had gained some traction, and we saw that people we didn't know were interested in our products. That's and awesome. And that's always like a really great thing. Okay, so before we do this song for you, give a couple call to actions. How could the community support you? Any URLs we could follow? Yeah, Any yeah. Any blogs? And are you gonna be maybe afterwards talking to people? Yeah, I'll be around. Be um, okay. Definitely come see me. Um, Twitter, uh, I have two brands, so at the UT Lab and at MRKT Bags um, for my brand Mad Rabbit Kicking Tiger, which you could probably find it. Um, in a number of retailers like Urban Outfitters and stuff like that. Okay. Well, you've had a couple sips of your beer, but get ready to drink a whole lot more because we're going to sing you our famous drink right. song. <laughs> so, Lenny, if you could cue it up, and Jonathan has the lyrics over there. So, thank you for coming and talking to us, and we are going to sing you into a drunken oblivion. To our ups and downs, we gather around and sing a drinking song. <laughs> a toast to those we love the most in the place where we belong. Cheers! Thank you.